Gobble gobble, friends. I'm Alex. And I'm Danny. And we're seriously nerdy about a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff, but mostly tiny miniatures. But a lot of stuff. But if we could take that stuff and make it smaller, that would be preferable. Yeah. Small things. Small. Small. And if you thought this was a Thanksgiving video, you're going to be so disappointed. <laughs> I love Thanksgiving. There's stuffing. No. Turkey's like fine. Honestly, I Cultural could... appropriation. So when we were in Nashville recently, in one of the boutique shops, we found a whole collection of vintage miniature sets like this one. When Danny saw it. I said it's plain. I'm gonna crash it. I've never done a model plane before, so I was interested in that, but mostly I was inspired by the idea of building a tree house around a plane crash site because that seemed like a fun idea. We recently watched Swiss Family Robinson and Tarzan, both problematic for their own reasons, but they do feature a exploratory vessel crashing on an island and then you build a tree house around it. But I've never seen it done with a plane. This is the Matchbox Boeing P-12E. It was released in 1972 and it features this very cute little plane that I guess was detrimental in the fight of the world wars. Ooh, my history is a little loose. <laughs> I mostly liked it for design reasons. Fasten your seatbelts, babies. This is the Matchbox Boeing P-12E model airplane kit from 1972. And it also happens to be 170 second scale, which means it's gonna be extra complicated. And to house our final treehouse plane, we picked up this little domed display case at Ikea. Uh, it had kind of just been sitting in our craft supplies for months waiting for the right project. And this one seemed like the right fit. So to get started, we carefully cut a piece of styrofoam that would fit within the dome's footprint and we rounded off all the edges just to give it kind of some natural sloping. Danny and I have fallen down a little bit of a wormhole of makers who specialize in clay, and it inspired us to do the same when we were building this tree. So we took a chopstick from our favorite local sushi restaurant and just coated that in some clay, and then used some of our nifty clay tools to shape it and make it look a bit more like a palm tree and a little less like a chopstick. Confession, this was my first time building any type of model kit, and in fairness, I was building it just to break it. So I started by following the directions that came on the Matchbox kit, which consisted of you had to find the little kit item on the tiny plastic grid, it's called a sprue, and then once I located it, I would snap it off and then sort of sand off any extra pieces and glue it in place. And then after a few steps, it actually started to look like a real plane. So I knew I hadn't messed it up yet. And then sort of knowing the story would be a bit untraditional, I discarded the pilot and the missiles and instead used the bottom wing supports only just to get the crash in place. The upper wings I saved because I had a game plan for them later. Now with the majority of the plane built, I took a few passes in imagining how the plane would have impacted sort of the crash landing moment. I like to think that our pilot made a valiant effort at landing on the island, but it was ultimately this big old palm tree uh, that broke off the wing and sort of brought the plane to a stop. So with the crash site in place, I was able to carve into that styrofoam and sort of make uh, an impact crater on the ground. And then it was just uh, a layer of sculptable to give a little texture of the terrain. Now was Danny's favorite part because it featured fire. We went to our local hobby shop and picked up some 364 styrene rods and then carefully melted them over a candle uh, after having scored them with an X-Acto knife to give them kind of a bamboo texture. Uh, what we came up with was a very natural looking little bamboo rod made out of styrene. Then I would use the little styrene rods to make what I'm calling rafts and I would use blue painter's tape, which is such a handy tool to have in your toolbox because it's sticky without being too sticky, and sort of create these structures with the styrene to represent what would actually be architectural structures for the treehouse. So using a little bit of thread and the styrene rod, I would create either flat rafts to represent platforms for the treehouse or the structural supports that you see that had X beams across. And we also visited our hobby shop to grab some scale ladders as well as some scale staircases. So with all these pieces in place, it was time to start thinking through the 
footprint of what this treehouse might look like. On the bottom floor is what I'm calling the kitchen. So I used the front of the airplane that covers the motor to create a little fire pit. I started to put the structures in place to build upward. But underneath the plane here is where I'm imagining is sort of the kitchen space and then we'll build upward to the other rooms, placing little rafts and platforms as we go. And anytime I could, I wanted to bring in pieces of the airplane just to represent how our pilot might have thought through using the wreckage in interesting ways to physically build this treehouse. So one Saturday morning, I found Danny tracing model airplane wings and watching Fixer Upper. And that's when I knew we were in trouble because Chip and Joanna make Danny get a little extra. Okay, so in fairness, when I started this, I thought the airplane wings were made of metal. It turns out that P-12E wings historically were wood with canvas over them. So it didn't make any sense that you would use them as the base of a treehouse floor because you would probably just step right through them. Danny's solve for this was to trace the wings and then recreate the skeleton of the wood beams inside of them from scratch. It seemed like a good idea at the time. She had perfectly good model airplane wings, and instead she spent an entire Saturday morning making a framework that goes inside the wings by hand. I regret nothing. Because not only was this more structurally accurate, but it also made really interesting architectural detail. They could look like an overhead pergola, they could look like flooring support. It also introduced this idea that the pilot had access to other types of wood beyond just bamboo. It was around this time that I also decided that I wanted a cute little bamboo gazebo as well as a fancy wraparound staircase. With the preliminary bones in place, we could finally move on to one of the more satisfying parts of this project, which is basing everything with an airbrush. Now we live in a tiny studio apartment, so airbrushing is a big effort, but it's always worth it, especially when it comes to priming things. Someday we hope to have a more permanent setup with an airbrush hood that filters all the fumes, but for now we have to mask up, open the windows, and use an air filter. The airbrush primer coat is thin enough that we don't lose any of the details. Uh, and you'll also see that we use little planks of cardboard here with more of our blue tape, just to keep everything tacked down while we airbrush it. That way we don't have to hold everything individually when we paint it and we can do big sections of airbrushing all at once. So with the primer in place, it was ready and time for color. So all of this detail work gave me a little bit of time to figure out my storyline of the pilot and this treehouse. So I've decided uh, our adventure is set in the 1930s. Our pilot got her hands on a decommissioned Boeing P-12E and she took to the skies with her easel and her paints, but a freak storm blew her off course and she crash landed on this uncharted island in the Pacific. So all these little decisions sort of helped me decide on things like what paint color would have been available to her for the exterior of her plane? And how would she have laid out the treehouse itself? Part of the research process I did for this project was looking up what automotive paint colors would have been available during the era. And I ended up settling on a color palette of primary colors since she's an artist. So you'll see a lot of yellow and red and blue as her color story. I still can't believe that you painted these lines by hand. It's amazing what you can accomplish if you're not overthinking it or realizing that you had masking tape available to you the whole time.
If you're new to miniatures and dioramas, you might hear people talking about washes or shades. So here's the deal. They're very thin shade paints that sink into the recesses of miniatures and help increase the contrast and bring out the details in those spaces. They essentially work like shadows, sinking into the cracks and not pooling on the surfaces. So it really brings out a sharp contrast on whatever you're working on. You can also find them at Citadel Workshop. We love Nuln Oil. You'll hear us talk about Nuln Oil a lot. So with the big elements of the diorama out of the way, I turned my focus to a live bamboo grove just to kind of nod to where our pilot is getting her stash of dry bamboo. So I painted my yellow bamboo stalks with a thin coat of fresh green, and then I cut out individual leaves by folding this green tissue paper. With a swipe into tacky glue, I could place leaves onto the bamboo stalks just to sort of suggest that this groove is very much alive. And I used a few different widths of styrene rods and a few different heights so that the bamboo looked a little more natural. Now, in my mind, our fictional island is maybe similar to a never inhabited Easter island, which means I gotta take a lot of liberties with vegetation types. When it came time for tiny props, I gotta fill in a little bit more of our pilot's story. So let's imagine that she was located after a few weeks, but she'd fallen in love with this uncharted island and decided to stay and continue to work on her treehouse. The compromise she made with the civilized world uh, was that they would drop off mail and a few supplies every couple months. So she had all the comforts of home, but she could live her best artist life on this island. With that plan in mind, I sculpted some 172 scale furniture like an armchair, a cooler, a dresser, just little, you know, props that could outfit this treehouse space and be really adorable. And pillows, so many pillows. So the one thing I don't think our pilot could fake with supplies from the jungle is pillows. So I love the idea that she would have had some scent from home. Keeping with our artist's storyline, we kept the primary color palette here. And I like that that meant that we could put together this little reading nook in her gazebo and sort of build a, a cozy space for her. So when thinking through how she would have structured the treehouse, I liked the idea that eventually she would move to the very top floor and that would be her hammock. Maybe the bottom floor was a kitchen space and the second level was sort of storage and living room. When it came time to glue in props, knowing where everything would live made the story a little bit easier. I had a few items stashed away from the model kit that I knew I wanted to incorporate, so it really felt like she'd used the plane crash to build parts of the treehouse, and the propeller was one of the last items, just as a support for the bamboo structure. If you've watched any of our earlier videos, you know the importance of regularly checking to make sure everything fits and closes. It's true. I learned this lesson with Polly Pockets. I learned this with the Sanderson Museum. Make sure things can close. Now, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret about a treehouse fail here. And there was a time I thought I could use cricket print palm leaves. And when that didn't work, I thought I could use plastic fern fronds to simulate palm trees. And you know what? Both of them failed. But there was a hot second that I thought that these palm leaves might be passable. So I just moved on and tried to make them look better with foliage. We stared at it and then just set it aside and focused on some moss and doing foliage around the base. They really were an eyesore though and they ruined the scale for the entire diorama so I ended up removing them and Alex rescued me by ordering some diorama palm trees from Amazon. But thankfully that was the time that I needed to paint our pilot heroine. These came all the way from Poland, their 172 female soldiers, and I selected the gal laying on her tummy so it looked like she was sketching up on her little balcony. Now, once she was complete, I used leftover styrene and some scraps of watercolor paper to quickly make an easel and some canvases. So 
So I gave her a little sketch pad and glued her into place. And then I used some tacky glue thread just to sort of add a little rope coming down from the top. This would give her some leverage if she ever needed to pull items from the top of the treehouse. We were in luck when the Amazon palm trees arrived because they looked pretty good and they looked like the right scale. So Danny got to work cutting them all off from their branches and then individually painting them with different shades of green. We knew some of them were gonna be attached to the top of the gazebo and some of them would be on the tree itself. So we colored some of them a darker brown to show that they had dried out. And then we started gluing them onto the tree itself using a combination of plastic glue or tacky glue. Then we kind of worked our way up around, adding more palm branches until we worked our way to the top. To make sure we got the desired level of floofiness at the top of the tree, we took a little ball of green stuff and then stabbed a bunch of the remaining branches into it to give the sense of floofiness. So floofy, it's extra floofy, everybody. One thing I kept thinking about in this story was the idea that I didn't want our pilot to get lonely, so I hoped there would be a way to get friendly animals on the island. Danny always finds a way to work in friendly animals. Yes, I do. So my last step was quickly 3D printing some teeny tiny parrots and painting them up. And placing them. They're not terribly detailed because they're so small, but dang it, they're cute. The final step here was to go in and shade those branches to give them more sense of depth. And then we went in after they were shaded and applied just a little bit of new color in order to unify the palm fronds. Then we weathered up the base a little bit and we topped it with the glass dome. What did you think of building your first model plane? I hit a point halfway through it where I was like, you're just gonna crash it, why are you even building it well? So if you were thinking that as you watched it, that makes two of us. Stop being jealous that I gotta build the plane. It was cool. I was very jealous. It was cool. I would have been upset about having to break it. That part was actually very satisfying. Yeah, I, that would have been harder for me. I came into this really hoping that I could use my leaf hack that I learned in the Halloween house video to make the most adorable scale palm leaves. Nope, turns out palm leaves are way too thin for a cricket to cut out. Always, always, always make more of the tiny things than you think you'll need. It's a lesson from shingles. It's a lesson for me from all the bamboo sticks. I made like four batches going, oh, this is the last batch, I've got enough. It was cool seeing what happened when you tried to melt little styrene. Obviously be careful when you're melting styrene because of fumes and plastic, but it did give it this little cool squiggly effect than what would have just been a straight stick. I love fire. I learned a lot about the population that they think lived on Easter Island and the type of foliage that would have grown there. How many people did live on Easter Island? I don't know. I just know that there was a type of palm tree there that went extinct. She does not remember now. No, no, no. This space has been cleared out in the brain to make room for other stuff. The more you know. I'm pretty sure it, somebody owns that. That's fair. You have learned more. Be on the lookout for things that inspire you, especially when you're on vacation. So we could have come back from vacation with a Nashville shot glass, which is perfectly acceptable. But instead, we came back with a model kit that we can make and you know, sort of create a part of our story from. That fit in your suitcase. That's an important one. Thanksgiving is coming up, so one way you can give thanks is to like and subscribe this video. Oh, nice tie-in. Did you see that? that I, tie so I tied smooth. it in. It, it sounded like it was People related to Thanksgiving. Unfollow for that, like, oh, a terrible holiday tie. If you enjoyed our previous video where we glowed up a Halloween house, we're very excited to share that our next video is along the same vein. So, uh, you wanna, you wanna, you wanna see that final footage? Snap!
had a lot of fun putting it together and then break it. <laughs> we crashed a plane. <gasps> I'm giving up on this one because I didn't do any okay. turkey references. Cool. Gobble gobble, friends. Your lovely Turn eyes. Around. Every now and then I get up. So what did we learn? Chin up, kid. You'll get them next time. Baseball. Stupid knots. Then it goes in, the camera goes into my mouth. Yeah. And that's where the final footage is. That's where it lives. Let's see that final footage.